I'm grateful you're watching and listening to this message. I hope that through what you hear, you really grow to understand what God says and how much he has shown his love for you in Jesus. As God's word is open, I pray that he speaks to you. And listen, if it would be helpful for you to talk to someone, please reach out. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Again, thank you for watching. Hi, and good morning. I'm Sarah Engel, and I'm blessed to be able to read today's passage from Scripture. I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, listening closely to wisdom and directing your heart to understanding, and if you call out to insight and lift your voice to understanding, and if you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up success for the upright. He is shield for those who live with integrity, so that he may guard the paths of justice and protect the way of his faithful followers. Sarah, thank you so much for reading today. So in the 2004 Olympics, uh, an American, his name is Matthew Emmons, he had already won a gold medal a couple days earlier. He was a rifle shooter, and so that was the competition that he entered. And he was competing in another uh, rifle event, and he was quite good at it. He had built up such a large lead. It almost seemed like it's one of those deals where the lead, nobody's going to be able to catch him. And he got to his last shot. So it's a 50-meter shot, and the bullseye they say is about the size of a dime. So he gets ready to take that shot and he nails it. He nails the target. It's like guaranteed gold. But his score flashed for the shot and when the score flashed, it flashed zero. And as he tells us, like his first thought was there, you know, some sort of scoring mistake. Those kinds of things happen because he had nailed the target, and he had. It just wasn't the right target. He aimed at the target one lane over. So he did get zero, and he finished eighth. He did not medal. I mention that because today we're looking at Proverbs and really thinking about, like, what, is it, what does it mean to hit the target with life? What does it mean, specifically today, what does it mean to be successful? I think alongside that, I want to think about how do we avoid that nightmare scenario where you hit the target, but it was the wrong target. You aimed at the wrong thing. And I think Proverbs can help us. One of the verses that Sarah read just a moment ago, verse 7 of that passage talked about success. So let's think about success. Last week we went through... Um, not everybody was here, but last week we went through some of the main characters of Proverbs. If you had to go, who are the three main characters of Proverbs? One of those main characters is what Proverbs calls the inexperienced. At least this translation does. Other translations are going to say like the, the simple or the young or the naive, the inexperienced. So when it comes to success for the inexperienced, it's almost as if they're, they, don't, they don't even think about the target. So Proverbs 9 presents this picture where wisdom is crying out and foolishness is crying out. And it's like the inexperienced are so aimless, they're so uncommitted, they're just really not even, not even asking the question. They have no target. They're not shooting at anything. It also, Proverbs 7 talks about because of that, because they're just not even, they have no direction, they have no target, they're easily seduced. They're never thinking what's the long game. Proverbs 22, 3, Proverbs 27, 12 are almost the exact same verse. It says danger is coming, but the inexperienced, they just keep going. Like they don't, they're not aware of like, what, what, what is my target? What am I trying to hit? That's the inexperienced. They're headed toward trouble, Proverbs says. But another main character in Proverbs is the fool. The fool is also known in Proverbs as like the wicked or the gossiper or the slanderer. I mean, it's kind of all of these words are clustered around the idea of someone being a fool. 
And so with the fool, when it comes to success, when it comes to hitting the target, sometimes they really don't care. They're going to blow up their lives. A lot of people are going to be hurt. They're going to alienate people. They're going to do everything wrong, and they just aren't going to change course. And that's a description of a fool. But other times, I wonder if they're like the Olympian that I mentioned a moment ago, where the fool finds success. Oh, they're successful, but just in all the wrong things. Or, oh, they're successful, but they do things in all the wrong ways. The fool's the person that, it's like, even when you prove to them you're wrong, they're like so, so self-absorbed, they can't, they can't admit it. So they're, they're going to aim, they're going to have their target, but it's, they're not going to listen to anybody. It says in Proverbs, a couple different places, when the fools come to power. So that would be, you know, they come to rule some measure of success. But it says when they get authority, everybody groans. It's like, oh, not them. And it also says that often people run and hide when they become like in charge of things. They're successful. But notice like, but successful at what? The foolish accumulate some wealth. Like, that seems successful. They've got a certain amount in the bank account, but then they go and squander it all. So even what they accumulate, it's not used for any sort of good purposes. The fool is the person that over and over again in Proverbs just trusts themselves. So their motto, I did it my way. I'm wise in my own eyes. Don't tell me what I, I, you know, I know, I know what I'm doing. I don't need anybody to tell me anything. And so, I mean, you try to live life and they try to secure things and we all do. I mean, we try to like have some sort of security, but it's hard to get a grip on life. Sometimes like a million things can go wrong just like that. And what happens for the fool is while they thought they were holding it all together, it all, it all blows up. And I was reading Proverbs 29, one that says they're shattered instantly and it's all beyond recovery. Like you can't even pick up the pieces because there are no pieces to pick up. So a fool may get what he wants, may get what she wants, but in the end, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's the kind of deal, like they're going to get how they want. So they may bribe, they may like play one person against another, they may talk behind your back, they'll do whatever it takes to get what they want. But in the end, you look at it and you go, man, even if you got what you want, are you an idiot? Did you have to, did you have to lose yourself to get what you wanted? So that's the, the inexperience and then the fool, but then Proverbs talks a lot about success with with the wise, like where did, how, do, how does wisdom lead to success? And over and over again, Proverbs, I think it's one of the things in studying it for teaching, I've been surprised at how often the word life or living comes up again and again and again. Here's a couple of references for you, Proverbs 3.18. And just like, look at that word life. Or Proverbs, Proverbs says, wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who hold on to her are happy. So do you see that? Like a tree of life. A lot grows underneath that shade. The reward of the righteous is life. Proverbs 10, 16. Proverbs 12, 28. There is life in the path of righteousness and in its path there's no death. Proverbs 21, 21. The one who pursues righteousness and faithful love will find life. Proverbs 22, 4. Humility, the fear of the Lord, results in wealth, honor, and life. And I just wanted you to see like this... Life to the fullest. This is success. This Proverbs is telling us. Like this is aiming. The wise person is aiming and what they're getting at is life. They're hitting the target and it's the right target. And because of that, they have life. I, I think we hear life and maybe you think of eternal life and that would be a great thing to think about. But it's not just what it's talking about here. It's like life even right now being lived to the full. Like full dimensions of that. Not having it all go up in smoke. So I do have a question. I actually have three questions today. So thinking of this idea of success and how the wise like pursue success and hitting the target, first question would be this. What is your picture? What is your target of success? I'm guessing all of us have one. And maybe you haven't thought about it for a while, but what is that picture of like, I'll tell you what success is. It's this. Proverbs gives us some of those pictures. Again, I I really do want you to think about that. Like what what in your mind, because we all may have some different answers to that, what's successful to you? Can I take you through a few places in Proverbs? So Proverbs 28, 19 talks about this. 
diligent farmer, and because he's so diligent, he's able to provide for people. They're able to eat. Many people can eat because, like, that's success. You're able to take care of people. Here's another idea of success. People can trust you. So that's what Proverbs 25, 13 is saying. People can trust you. People are blessed by you being in the room, you being in the picture. So your life is a net benefit to them. That's success. Proverbs would say that success is living in such a way where your parents are proud or generations that follow you are blessed. That's success. Success is when a king or a ruler a righteous ruler, a righteous manager, a righteous owner, or you know, however we want to say, a righteous teacher, when they get into some measure of authority, like everybody is blessed because they bring stability. It's the waters aren't choppy anymore. They're blessing others. Some of you know Proverbs 31 goes this whole description of what a godly woman looks like. And I think there's so many applications that aren't just for a godly woman, but uh, a godly man as well. But Proverbs 31, we'll talk about a reputation, we'll talk about family relationships, we'll talk about achievements and long-term results, and even recognition, like people know her, they look at her, and they have respect for her. I just appreciate the picture, I mean, it's, again, it's a picture of success. This is the way Proverbs 8 and verse 18 says, with wisdom are riches and honor, lasting wealth and righteousness, but lest we think like it's just about money, then it goes, but, but wisdom's fruit is better than even solid gold. So what comes out of it is better than anything you could put in a bank account. My harvest is better than pure silver. I walk in the ways of righteousness along the paths of justice. Wisdom gives wealth as an inheritance to those who love wisdom and fills their treasuries. So Proverbs isn't simplistic. I mean, I'm really, really like, your relationship with the Lord matters, but Proverbs doesn't just talk about your relationship with the Lord. It's like, how's your life going? What is the trail of your decisions and your influence? What does that look like? The people closest to you, how are they affected by you? The targets you're trying to hit or targets maybe that aren't on your radar. Proverbs would say, like, aim at success. Aim at flourishing. Aim at enjoying good things. So I ask again, like what is, if you had to give a picture or a snapshot or something that would say, this is what success looks like to me, Curtis. So for some, it might even be, can, can I just go through some scenarios? It could be like maybe a retirement picture or retirement party where everybody comes and says, you know what, I'm so glad she was in our office. I'm so glad I got to know her. I'm so glad I got to know him because he really made a difference. And you have a group of people that work closely with you maybe eight hours a day for two decades, and they go, I saw that person walk the talk. Like, they, they live out what they believe. Is that your picture of success? Is, is your picture of success maybe finishing a race or achieving some sort of medal or some sort of certificate that says, you know what, I did this. I finished I wonder if success would look like, you know, the family picture that you send out on Christmas cards and like everybody's kind of in their place. Like, is that the, is that the picture? Maybe one of those pictures hangs in your office. And I know it does for me. I've got those pictures that just give some measure of like, this is, man, this is, this is life. This is living life. I wonder if it is a certain number in your bank account. When you read that number, you go, okay, it's all good. If you don't see that number, it doesn't feel like it's success. I wonder if it's a position like, okay, you made partner, you're VP of something, you've gotten tenure, or your resume says, you know, whatever, is that, is that what says you're successful? I wonder if success is something you made or something you designed or something you build. Is success a, a relationship? If you had to take a picture, would it be a, a conversation with you and your closest friend or someone that means the world to you? And you, just even looking at the picture, you go, you know what, I trust them, I love them, we're close, I know them, they're for me, I'm for them. Like, Curtis, that's success to me. Or is success being able to, uh, in the middle of a big decision, you're right there. I think for some, that's success. It's like I'm, I'm around where big decisions are made, and I, I'm... I'm in the game. I'm not outside of it. I'm, 
accomplishing things. Or maybe it's how you would introduce yourself or maybe how others would introduce you. It's like someone introduces you in a certain way and you just kind of, okay, that tells me something. We go on and on. That's probably a decent start. But what is your target? What's your picture? I'd love for you to think about that. I think Proverbs is telling you, like you can't aim at nothing. That's the inexperienced, the simple, the naive, the uncommitted. So what are you aiming at? What is that picture? But can I, can I go a layer deeper than that? Because, because Proverbs talks about insight and discernment. So it's not just taking like surface layer things. It's actually going a layer deeper. I want to ask another question. Question number two, why does that picture that you just thought of, that I just came up with, that I thought of, why does that picture represent success to you? What is it about it? Do you know your heart well enough? Like Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart because out of it flows everything. That, you know, your whole life flows out of your heart. So what is close to your heart that says, well, I'll tell you why that family picture, or I'll tell you why that certificate that hangs in my office, I'll tell you why that, that conversation that I had with a close friend, I'll tell you why that is my success. Other people may not think that's success. I'll tell you why it's my success. And that's the layer I want us to dig because that's the heart layer. I'd love to at least list a few things here for you to think about. Again, we're going beyond the surface and we're going a little bit deeper. And we're saying, I think these are the things that are deeper than the picture. Those pictures represent something. The target represents something. Can I just walk through these? So is success, like what you're really driving at, is achievement where you can go, I conquered, I completed, I excelled, I delivered results, I'm productive? Or is it your appearance, your image? Probably no generation before has has ever like been so enamored with our appearance. Is it like, you know what, at least I can appear this way, at least my image, my maybe my body image, like at least I look this certain way. And that's why that picture says I'm successful. Or is it approval? People like me, they think favorably of me. Kind of cousins to that would be acceptance and affirmation. Or is it comfort? Like you just don't have to deal with the hard. You're free from pain or stress. Or is it companionship? It's like, I'll tell you why that picture means something because that person, like, I'm walking with them in life. They're my best friend. Or is it control? Maybe you like grew up and it was chaos and you've got a picture now like, you know what, I, I don't have to, I don't deal with chaos anymore because I have some measure of control. Or is it intimacy, you're loved and you're known? Is it order where everything behaves predictably and you know what you can expect? Is it, is it pleasure, you experience nice things or maybe even adventures that you want to take? Is it recognition? Like, you know what? I'll tell you what success is. People see me and they know what I've done. Is it respect? People show deference to me. They give me the regard that I'm due. Like some people, it's like, I don't need to be liked, but I will be respected. Is, is that the target? So again, I'm saying there's a picture, but beyond that picture, there's something else. Is it security? Is it things, especially bad things, just can't touch me? I've kind of insulated myself. Is it service? I, I don't have to be in a position where people are serving me. I actually can be serving them. And so that's why that picture means something to me. Is it significance where you go, I know I matter? Is it status, like I rank in a certain place? I wonder how you're processing this list because I'm guessing there's some combo that we're all different in this. Different things matter to us. And there's a variety of reasons of how we were shaped and what's important in our art. Think about this, your picture of success. Can you go to another layer and go, what's at the root? And I think this is probably where we ought to be the most careful because I I want you to understand, I'm, I know there's, I know there's places where we could take any one of these and go to the extreme and we could sin in a million ways with things on that list. We could want them too much. We could give up too much to have them. So I do understand that. I do understand there's a million ways we could do wrong by those. But I also think, as I look at that list, I, I also recognize, like, God made us how he made us to need. Like, do we need companionship? Do you need some measure of control over your life? Do you... Do you want that affirmation? Do you want approval? I mean, isn't that even how you come as a kid? Like you want your, your parents' approval or a teacher's approval. So I look at these things and I go, I, I, I'm sure there's many of them that could move into sinful things. But I also go, this is, 
Also, God has made the world he made, made us the way we're made. But again, I'm asking like, okay, what's the target? What am I aiming at? So I will say, this is, I think, where a lot of people, a lot of people stop. So maybe they've done the hard work of going, okay, what's my picture of success? And maybe you have done that. Maybe you go, like, Curtis, this is what I think. And maybe you can even pull it back a layer and I'll go, I'll tell you what I, what I deeply want, well, you know, what that picture means, what my family means, what the career means, what the whatever goal means, what the doing this race or accomplishing this thing. I, I know what that means, but a lot of people stop there. So they will pull out all the stops. They assemble all these sources to help them get where they want to go. They work out a game plan. They pursue success. And maybe they even have a lot of success. But what Proverbs, what Proverbs doesn't let us do is stop there. It pushes us one step further. And it's actually wisdom pushes us one step further. I want you to hear the, the place. It, it, you're, you've got to ask one more question if you're living in Proverbs world. Proverbs 9.10 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Proverbs 14.26, in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children have a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turns away people from the snares of death. Better a little, I mean, this is Proverbs 15.16, better a little with the fear of the Lord, great treasure with turmoil. So for your good, wisdom is going to keep pushing you to ask one more question, and that is how does the fear of the Lord shape your view of success? How does the fear of the Lord shape your view of success? So it will not be enough to just go, what's my target? Okay, what matters to me about my target? There's one more element that's brought into that. The fear of the Lord. Talking about the fear of the Lord can be a tricky subject because some people immediately hear that and they go, oh, well, I ought to be terrified. I better run because God's coming. But actually, when you have a relationship with the Lord and you know his love for you and you know his care for you and you know his faithfulness to you, it actually doesn't mean you run away from him. It means you run toward him. There still is a, an awesome amount of reverence and, and like you certainly humble and you submit to the Lord, but you also know this is our father who said to, to ask him for things, that we've got a good father. So it's not like we just go run and hide, but the fear of the Lord directs us to run to him. So make sure we understand the fear of the Lord. But when that begins to shape our view of success, it actually changes things. It's helpful. So I want us to go back again. We got the picture. We got the idea of like what's behind that picture. But does your picture of success take into account the fear of the Lord? Does it does it push you to see others? Because the fear of the Lord will do that. The fear of the Lord will push you to see others and factor that in the concept of success that you have. I could look at my life and go, you know what, I'm successful here and here and here and I've done this and I've done that and I've done that and all that makes me pretty successful. But the fear of the Lord is going to say, but wait a minute, he created a big world, not just, not just a world for me to be self-centered. But how am I living for others? The world is much bigger than me. He created other image bearers. He gave me instruction that I'm to love him with all of my heart, but I'm also to love my neighbor as myself. So does my definition of success include others being successful, others flourishing? If it meant I have to sacrifice for their good, would I do that? Or I go like, well, that's not successful. I'm not sacrificing anything for them. Well, then again, see how Proverbs begins to push and go, but are you living under the fear of the Lord? Do I love people like Jesus called me to do? If I, if I, okay, some of you have control. Some of you have power. Some of you have authority. Some of you have approval. Everyone likes you. Are you using that for the good of others? Or are you just absorbing it all so that you kind of get puffed up? Do you see the difference there? It means the good life is not just one where you accumulate, but you're generous, where you provide for others. It means you might even limit some pursuits of your own if it came at the expense of others. You're not going to walk on people. You're not going to step on people, even if it would mean like you achieved. But if it came at their expense, that's not a net win for you. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord also causes me to enjoy God's gifts, but to hold them in perspective. So when I look at my idea of success, I'm living in the world God created, and he gives lots of good gifts. What a gift it is to be secure. What a gift it is after you've 
like had a lot of hard things to have some measure of comfort. What a gift to, to have a close friend, to have a companion, to have someone that you can share a level of intimacy with. What a gift it is to be respected or to be affirmed. What a gift it is to be recognized. But, but again, so we do enjoy God's gifts. But you know, it keeps it in perspective. When we live in the fear of the Lord, we also recognize the Lord rules over a world that for now is broken. There's a lot of pain and loss in our world. So any definition of success that says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no pain. In that. I mean, is that really a definition of success? If it doesn't factor in that, and so much of the world is broken. So I think about that. I mean, we have our pictures, but what, what about when the bad day comes? You get the text, you get the call, and it's the nightmare begins. So you got that definition of success, but what about then? You get the pink slip, you, you have the family picture, but now one person's not in that picture anymore. So does that totally devastate your idea of success? Did you choose your target wisely? Did you factor in a world that could be out of your control just like that? It's interesting. So Proverbs, like even in the Bible, so it's next door neighbors are Psalms and Ecclesiastes. Psalms where they're crying out repeatedly, my God, my God, why am I so down? Like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Ecclesiastes is looking at the world and going, this is absolutely meaningless. It's pointless. Nothing is working the way it's supposed to. And then you go one door down and you've got the book of Job where it's the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. I mean, it's right there in that cluster to help us appreciate sometimes the world. If we have our idea of success and it's not incorporated, things could really, really blow up. Could your life be successful? Could my life be successful if some things were stripped away? Because likely they will be. Do you have the illusion, do I have the illusion that I can insulate my life and nothing bad will happen? We know that's fairy tale world, or we should, but often we don't. We pretend like I can hold on to everything. When we have the fear of the Lord, we realize we are trusting in the God who works all things, even the worst possible things, for good. These are not out of Sam. The world's not spinning out of his control. He doesn't have to somehow find the mop bucket because the mess that we've made of the world just somehow got beyond his control and he didn't anticipate. I mean, this is not how scripture ever presents him. Am I trusting in the one who will make a new heavens and a new earth? Is my idea of success, can it even go past some pain and loss and go, I could even lose that? And likely we're all going to lose. I mean, I, I could stand in a cemetery and shed a lot of tears. Or I could have this number that was here dwindle down to here. Or I could have this relationship that I thought was uh, like thriving and I thought was going to be the one and then it turned out not to be the one. I could have all that and I could still, I could still see success. I think this is 100% easy preaching compared to how hard it is to live. It's easy to say these things. The fear of the Lord also does another thing. The fear of the Lord humbles me because I realize any idea I have of success ought to be like really, really well dosed by God's grace. I mean, that ought to be all over it. So if I'm, if I'm processing success, if I'm looking at recognition and approval and status, and it's like, it's kind of puffing me up. Like, look right over there. I've got that on the wall. Look right over here what's on this business card. Look right over here at my family. My family's not like that family. My family, you know, we've been, able to, we've been able to do a few things here. Did a couple things right, I'll tell you. If there's any thought of that, does Proverbs not push us toward, like, we, all the capacities, the environment we have, any gifts that we have, they're all from God. I don't take my next breath without him giving it. I could easily sin and wreck and destroy my life if he weren't preserving me. The fear of the Lord humbles us. On the day where I top out in like the max of all, everything I have to offer the world, and I feel like I have all that to offer, and it's still not enough. It's still not enough. And I go, yeah, it never was about me maxing out anyway. There's a God who supplies all my needs. 
I don't need bigger, I don't need better, I don't need more if I can rest in him. The fear of the Lord does one more thing, and it's the best way not to say it is it stretches my time horizon. Because I think it's very easy to, okay, you got your definition of success, but does it end like the graduation, you throw the cap up and everybody takes the picture? Like, is that, is that it? Is that where your definition of success, or is it the retirement party? I want to ask even, is it the deathbed where you're surrounded by your family and everybody and you're right, you're okay with everybody? Is that where it maxes out? Or can, could we stretch out that horizon just a little bit further and maybe a lot further, like eternity? I wonder, is your definition of success gaining the whole world? Because Jesus said you could gain the whole world, but what if you lost your soul? You need a wider time horizon there. You need one that goes into eternity. So yes, you enjoy things here. Yes, things matter here. They certainly matter here. But are there deposits that actually will outlive you? Are there treasures that actually can't be taken by a bad stock market or by someone actually stealing them from you? Are there treasures that go like, I've deposited those and they're actually in the kingdom of heaven, so they're going to far outlive. That was, my, that was always my target. However much God gave me, I was always trying to aim at something bigger than just what I could enjoy for these 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years that the Lord gives me. It's most of what I'm living for, earthly treasure, that on the eternal horizon it would go, man, that, didn't matter. that really didn't seem to matter at all. So that's the questions, like we got the picture, let's pull behind that, but let's make sure we see the fear of the Lord. I mentioned Matthew Emerson, the Olympian that hit the wrong target. I kept reading the story though, interestingly enough, at that Olympics, just a couple days later, so he was sitting in the uh, athlete's village there, the Olympic village, and a Czech rifle shooter came up to him named Katarina, and just felt so terrible for him and was trying to console him. They ended up dating. They ended up getting married three years later. They have four kids today. And I thought, man, that all was not lost. There was, there was some redemption, even if you didn't get the gold medal. Like, I, I think he would look back at his life and go, I missed that target. But life has been so incredibly Uh, good to me in many other places. I wonder today, could it be that today could be one of those redeeming days for you? You may have lived a lot of your life aimed at the wrong target. And today, like lots of things are coming to you. Or maybe you've never done the work of like peeling, like what do I want? Or maybe the fear of the Lord really hasn't been incorporated. You've got your life goals. Maybe you wrote them in a notebook and you've got them posted on a wall. I mean, maybe But none of them accounted for the fear of the Lord. None of them accounted for meeting him. Today's the day. I love this. The Bible says today's the day of salvation. It's not even like tomorrow. It's today. Today, a father goes out to meet his children, some that are foolish and squander everything, and some that are self-righteous but just as foolish because they think they're better than everybody else. And he goes out to meet them, and he goes out to meet us. So today, could it be that you get a new definition of success that actually is under the fear of the Lord and you actually know the drivers in a different way? I think Proverbs points us that direction. I'd love to pray for us to have that horizon. Then we're going to sing a prayer that asks the Lord to really be our vision on this. Like you be my vision, Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for time to look in your word and thank you for uh, where, I, I do thank you your word not only nudges, but confronts and convicts and sometimes cuts us and we need it. And I'm grateful that uh, your cutting even into our soul always comes with healing. I'm so grateful that you don't just put us through uh, a grinder and could care less about what comes out the other side. I do pray for all of us in this room, whether it be men and women, students, Only you can show us where our definitions of success are not where they need to be. Only you can reset our lives to where our target actually is an eternal target that factors in the amazing grace you had for us. Only you can do that, so I ask you to do it. told us to ask and seek and knock, and I pray the good gift that you would give to your children today is that our church would be filled with people that 
uh, are pursuing success and not hitting the wrong target, but hitting the right one. I pray that we would have life, abundant life. Uh, Give that to us, not because we deserve it, but because of the work of Jesus on our behalf. We ask it all in his name. Amen.